So my most successful video I've ever made to this day is the one where I talk about what it's like majoring in game design. And I imagine it's because there's not a lot of people who talk about majoring in game design because there's not a lot of people who have majored in game design. It's a sort of a brand new degree experience. Um, and I've got the degree. I just got it. Uh, they actually haven't even mailed me the degree itself because it's so fresh, but don't worry, it's, it's coming. I earned it. Uh, and so I thought it might be fun to go through my journey in game design uh, visually so you can see the things that I've learned learned <laughs> in my time in the major and the only reason why I do the quotes is because you'll find that a lot of the progress I made in the context of progressing as a game artist uh, happened outside of school and not directly through schoolwork but I definitely think that a lot of my growth that I've had uh, is because of my coursework so we'll go through and you'll be able to see if the things that I produced are similar to things that you would like to produce or the sort of journey that you would like to go on. Or even if it's not, it's okay. My disclaimer is that all the art that I'm gonna show you today is very deeply, inherently personal to me and to my experience. And so even if you major in game design somewhere else, uh, it's no guarantee that you'll create the same kind of work, the same quality of work, the same anything. This is just what I managed to accomplish given the setting of everybody's learning about how to make games. So, uh, and if you would like to major in game design, but you are thinking much more technically or programmatically than uh, say artistically, then what I'll say is that uh, you'll probably be employed before me. I'll be talking about everything in the framework of my work because I'm an artist first. I am not a coder, a programmer, anything like that. I'm not even really a game designer, right? Sure, I could do it. But my, I, my role in game making is definitely on the artistic side. Uh, that does not mean that I never learned anything about anything else. It just means that that's what I was focused on. And even given that I was interested in the artistic side, that changed dramatically is what you'll find. So I'm not gonna say that you're not gonna get anything out of this video if you're more interested in code and programming than art as a, as a game developer. But what I will say is that there might not be a lot specific to what you will see other than progress. So let's get into it. Editing me like a month later after the rest of this footage, I just wanted to clarify when you hear me say things like good, best, better, like comparing myself to other people to stuff like that in, in my class, what I'm trying to say is not me being like, oh, I'm good just for like ego inflation or whatever. It's not me trying to make a statement about objective, what is good art, what is bad art, that's very abstract. The reason why I'm including those statements of comparison is so that you have an idea of frame of reference of higher ability among the class. So if I say I'm doing pretty good comparative to everyone else, that means I'm just letting you know for the sake of your own knowledge in this video the level that you can compare it to in terms of who's hireable in that pool in that moment that is all okay so let's start off by looking at where i am now just a, as a baseline because i feel like it's relevant to say who i am before we start this journey right so i am currently choosing to specialize in lighting art, okay? My degree is in game design, which is a vast sort of thing, but you'll find that those of us who are successful end up picking a specialization. Not to say I am successful yet, I'm, I'm literally a week out from graduation, so it's hard to say how I'm gonna turn out, but this is a look at what my current portfolio looks like. Um, even this is actually a little out of date, but I will start off by saying, I am not bragging, I am not tooting my horn. I am one of the more successful of my graduating class in terms of the artists. So there are people who already have their AAA jobs and have had them for forever. I'm not one of them, I'm not employed yet. Um, what I'll say is I've interviewed at AAA companies and my goal is AAA, so I'll just put that out there. That's gonna be my baseline that I'm comparing to. So I've had interviews, so I'm of the almost about to be ready caliber but I'm currently unemployed. There are people from my major who have had jobs for a while, but they are not artists. There's not a single artist of my graduating class yet who has been employed for art, okay? Putting that out there. It's harder to get a job <laughs> in AAA game dev spaces 
as an artist, period. But the ways that you're gonna go about getting them are usually to specialize. And so the people who I found employed uh, so far are people who specialize in production and mocap. So that's some starter advice already. You can you can clock out now. That's that's as much advice as you're gonna get from me. Just kidding. If you're interested in pursuing the arts further uh, and you'd like a portfolio that will get you hired-ish, then stay tuned and we'll, we'll say how we got there, right? Check back in in a couple months. I'll let you know if I get a job or not. But anyway, the reason why I chose lighting off the bat, we'll get into later as we talk in the progression. But first let's talk about, um, you know, the beginning. You know, how did I get into college, right? Because right now, I assume if you're watching this, you're like, well, I'd like to go make video games when I grow up. When I'm a, when I'm a grown up, I wanna make video games, right? And I was thinking the same thing five years ago in, in high school. Well, six years ago now, actually. But um, I'd like to make video games uh, and I like making art and that's what I know and that's what I'm gonna go pursue. But given the context that I went to a high school where I was totally art focused, um, I was a big fan of making fan art for a lot of stuff. So this was the kind of stuff on screen that I was producing around the time that I was applying for college. I didn't apply with any of the images you see on the screen because I was under the impression being a fine arts person that fan art is lowbrow, you know, not acceptable sort of stuff. But the things that I was making in my own free time for my own creative passion are the things you see on screen, fan art for various things. All the things on the right, no, that's the left. The left of the screen were made with Copic marker. I was still working traditional. I would dabble in things like digital, which is what you see on the on the left, but um, no, on the right. Uh, but if you want to go more in depth about my background of how, before I was in college, before I was making games, that sort of thing, I have a whole video <laughs> uh, already on my channel that you can check out that I think is kind of interesting. It's kind of a early internet documentary. Um, if you're interested in what it was like growing up on the Dragon Ball Z OC fandom of DeviantArt. But that was my background uh, before I started taking my art super seriously. I sort of backed away from Dragon Ball, but I was still making fan art all the time of things that I loved. Um, but of course, I figured it wasn't good enough to get me into college to have fan art, even though it looked kind of nice at the time to me. Um, so I was studying art academically in a traditional fine art sort of setting for many years. These are pieces that I produced within that context of traditional fine art. So charcoal, pencil, I did paintings of all kinds. We're talking acrylic watercolor. Um, I tried oil, wasn't very good, but <laughs> um, sculpture, ceramic. I was doing every kind of medium you can imagine. I was totally immersed in the traditional art scene prior to going into college. And um, so I applied with stuff like that. Let me see if I have one more. Yeah, so these are from my AP art portfolio, which I did get a vibe on uh, with the concentration of reversing gender norms. So kind of baseline, but I try to do things with a hint of comedy with this. So it's not super funny or good looking back. Like I'm going, I'm gonna go through and probably cringe at a lot of my own work because it's so outdated to me, but uh, I couldn't include the funny ones because I usually have full frontal nudity, which YouTube, am I right? You can't, you can't show that. But basically, this is the kind of stuff I was making. So these are mixed media, usually with Copic marker, Copic marker uh, on the base, and then I would color pencil over them. They were super quick productions for me. Um, and using those images and some other technical paintings, that is how I got accepted into Drexel University with a rather hefty <laughs> financial aid package. I mean, it wasn't just the art. I also had sort of stellar grades in high school, which of course I abandoned for college because it doesn't matter if I'm making video games, but to get into college, I knew the importance. And also I came from a school that had a really, really good art program and a really, really good set of academic opportunities. Uh, I was in a, a higher income sort of area, but uh, if you are not fortunate enough to be from where I was from, don't fret because you don't, you, your grades don't have to be stellar, I would say, to get into most game design programs, even though they are competitive. I learned a little bit after I got accepted that the acceptance rate for my school's game design program was 14%, so that's super, super, super hard. But take that as me saying, when I got in, you didn't actually need to make any games. I know people who got in by actually going in and had things from like Unreal Engine in their portfolio or super basic games. But what I'll say is if your grades aren't stellar 
and you want to get in, um, and you maybe don't feel like the most confident visual artist, then the best way to distinguish yourself is to go ahead and try and do a free Unity or Unreal tutorial and submit a simple game. And that's a great way to actually see if this is for you because if you go into <laughs> Unity or Unreal and you follow along all the free coursework like Unity Learn stuff and it's too complicated and you're killing yourself, bestie, this degree will not be for you. That's, that's what I'll say because even if you wanna go in and be an artist and you know you're never gonna touch Unity, you still have coursework in Unity at my school. You still have coursework in Engine that you have to get through. A fun fact is that the first and only class I ever failed in all of college was called Game Design Fundamentals, which was just a class for scripting in Unity, but say lovey. Um, what I'll say is that if you feel as though trying to develop things on your own is too nebulous, even given all the free resources out there and too complicated, uh, it is, so don't feel disheartened, but it doesn't really get easier. You just <laughs> learn more. And if that dissuades you, then I would say that if you want to get a job as a game artist or something, or a programmer, game design is often not the correct degree. I'll probably go in and make a separate video, just like a remake of that one I made a long time ago where I talk about the experience and should you do it. Uh, but generally, there are better degrees if you want a more specific job. But anyway, I digress. Let's get into what I actually learned my first year, right? So I show up, the day after I turn 18, I moved to a city I'd never been to before. I was like, hey, let's make video games. And so the coursework began. Uh, to my surprise, actually, because I really didn't do any research at all about what the program would be, we started off by learning 3D modeling in Maya. Okay, so this was like my first ever 3D model that I remember. A pen. So we had to find a pen, one that didn't mean anything to you, and we physically took it apart, and we modeled each indivi individual piece, and we put them in Maya, and we rendered them just like this. So what you see here, I mean, when I, I th still think it looks fine to this day. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's not bad. It's, it's a pen. Uh, the render itself is obviously kind of grainy, but this was my first ever model that I you know, made to completion with all the parts. Um, I have since lost the flash drive where I kept all of my year one, year two stuff on it. Like I left it in the labs a couple years ago. So what we're looking at here, I mean, I wish I could include the breakdown for it, but I literally lost it. Um, these are just recovered images from my art station archive from years ago. But this is the kind of stuff we made in our first ever class was 3D models of pens. And you know what? The assignment is great. I, I actually really enjoyed the assignment to this day. I think this is super relevant and a great way to start out, you know, learning basic textures and uh, learning that when you're modeling something, you're modeling all its parts. You're not just modeling a holistic thing. So not a bad way to start. Uh, and then we did this procedural assignment. Uh, these are kumquats, of course, but not a lot to say. These are not great, but this was the beginning of learning how to think about node-based editors, which is something I work with to this day. So it's a good lesson, I would say. Uh, the render is less grainy, kinda, so that's a win. We're, we're learning, but the stems, those are totally horrible. Uh, and then this was uh, the final for that modeling class. This was actually a group project. So three of us got together and we decided to go with a blacksmith's workshop. We all had different sort of hero objects that we were in charge of. I remember doing uh, the, there's like a knight's helmet on the table and the uh, little hand tools on the wall on the leather thing. Those are what I remember doing. I can't remember what else I may have done. I think I did the lighting actually, like the final, like putting everything together. But at the time I was like, this is a, okay this is okay i mean looking back on it now knowing what i know obviously this is horrible to my current standards but you can see the potential there i mean this wasn't the best one in the class at the time by far but it is what it is this was the final i remember thinking that the light was pretty cool that i that i managed to make a sort of sunbeam sunbeam in uh so this would be i guess foretelling my future <laughs> in in lighting specifically but we also had to take animation in in Maya. So all of this stuff is in Maya. My full education in 3D was in Maya. Um, and this was the first one I ever made. It's just a looping animation with a bunch of different parts. And this is the best thing I made in that class by far. I mean, I lost everything else that I made. 
in the animation class, but this was this was by far the best thing I made in that class. So I still think it's cute to this day. The um, eyes on the robot are very distracting and always have been, but low-key not that bad. <laughs> I, I'm not an animator and I don't really find animating in 3D super fun. It's something I would do as a means to an end, but I don't know. Over oh, At the time, what I'll say is that how I felt about Maya is that it was way over complicated and horrible. That's what I thought. Sometimes I liked the output. Like when this, when I made this as my first ever thing, I was like, wow, okay. Something, we might be able to do something with this. But in general, the, what it was like working in those labs was grueling. It was grueling being there in those labs. There were people, we would all go, this was pre-COVID, of course. Um, we'd all go and just be sleeping in the labs. We'd be there till 4 a.m., 5 a.m., spend all nighters working on these assignments. Sometimes people would take up 10 computers just rendering out frame by frame on these Maya assignments. And to me, looking back now, knowing what I know now how to make things, that is egregious. But everybody was doing it. There was no, we didn't know any other way. We had just been taught a certain way. We didn't bother to go outside of what we've been taught, of course, but you know, there was a wide range of ability also. A lot of people made some really amazing stuff, but to me, the output was never worth, it was never worth the pain of working in this program. And that's the limit, I think, of what I included for this year of like actual coursework that I made. But I, what I'll say is that even though my education was in Maya, I was still under the impression that I would be a concept artist. I would be a, a 2D artist through and through. I had not been won over by 3D. So I was still doing things like this in my free time, working on like concepts for people and trying to improve my painting. A personal goal I had set for myself was to master digital art making. You know, I wanted by the end of college to be able to be as good and better at 3D painting as I was with 2D, you know, like obviously I understood how 2D works, but personally I set the goal of being able to translate those skills. And really I achieved that, I think, year one. At the end of year one, I was able to paint digitally as well, as certainly, and better. And I did that by cheating, of course. I bought a, a Wacom Cintiq and that pretty much made the, the transition seamless. Uh, there's a lot of problems with this image, but this was me beginning to try and do things a little different, right? I don't remember what this is a concept for specifically. I think it was just for fun, but I was working on stuff like that. Uh, this was some concept art I also made for our game that we started working on as a personal project called Digital Janitors. So me and a couple friends got together and we joined our, our entrepreneurial game studio that Drexel has and we decided to pitch a project and come up with a project where, that we would make on our own free time and publish theoretically in six months um, and it would just be our personal LLC but when we were coming up with the concept I was like I'll be a concept artist I think you'll find in both of these images that I did really well on the faces <laughs> like the faces really hold up on on both of these I think well the front profile anyway um, but then I would have sort of fundamental failings of anatomy so it's okay you know this was still me I think at 198 no i think i was still 18 when i when i was painting these and then over the summer of my first year i was actually a researcher our school had a program where if you were accepted they would just pay you to do some sort of research in your field and somehow i was able to research as a game designer you know a game developer and i worked for the entrepreneurial game studio again um over the summer and we put together, it was called Tweet Your Own Adventure. It was an experimental technology where you tweet something at the game and that will affect the choice live real time. So we were just testing out a technology of like, if you tweeted at something that was projected, that was projected on the side of a building, uh, then how would your tweets affect that? So we did like a choose your own adventure thing where we painted out, there were three different stories that you could alter the choices of based on your tweets. So these were some of the things I painted for that. Um, and then also part of that research, we had our own personal projects of picking a game to enter into the GDC narrative contest, which if you're not aware, is open up to college students where you basically do a book report on a game you like in a certain format. And I mean, that's really it. That's the prompt, do a book report <laughs> about what makes a game good. And so I picked my favorite game at the time, Mass Effect 3, which meant a lot to me because that was a game that convinced me that games could be art, that games could be a greater sort of medium than what people were. Like, people often think of Mario or something as the game. And Mario's a great game, but to me, Mass Effect was something more, right? And so I did 
write the paper and I did win gold. Can you believe that? <laughs> I think I won. Yeah, I won gold. Uh, platinum is the highest, but I did win gold and I won tickets to GDC, which was canceled because this was for in 2020. But as a winner, you can make a poster. And so I did paint my poster as well to talk about that that would have been presented you know I could have talked about my findings but I actually have a video about that too I <laughs> made years and years ago talking about the substance of what was in the paper basically it was like Mass Effect is about how racism is bad anyway and that concluded year one of college for me. On to year two. I was still at this point convinced I was going to be some sort of illustrator or concept artist, but I wasn't thinking too deeply about it. That's just what was most comfortable to me at the time, right? Because 3D was and then my Unity education was very minor at this point. So I was like, well, nothing, nothing has convinced me otherwise yet. This is from our UI UX design class where you had to basically just redesign a, a game's UI and so I picked KOTOR, uh, one of my favorite games ever. Looking back on this, this is horrible. Uh, I've learned so much more about UI just by learning about design since then. There's a billion ways I would make this look better if you had me do it now. It would be much more gorgeous of, in every way. But <laughs> at the time, this was one of the better ones in the class is what I'll say. This is, this was not a bad one. This, people call me a tryhard for this because I decided to paint some pictures, but there are some ways it could have been improved for sure. But this was the kind of stuff we were making. These were just a few screens. We had to do a whole prototype sort of thing, but I was still making fan art too, is what I'll say. And that last year you didn't see very much, but this was like a resurgence era for me in terms of fan art. I was, these are all dig digital paintings, but I was still trying to further my painting skills because like I said I still thought I, that's what I was going to end up doing. Um, I was really trying to think about lighting, making things more serious. This is when I was learning that referencing is the most crucial thing ever because before I would semi-reference but we're talking um, much more direct stuff but yeah like I, I was just continuously improving at this point. I had my first co-op at this point in, in 2020 where I was a art intern and it was pretty... Uh, pretty big deal that I managed to get a co-op at a game studio. What I'll say about Drexel is, is it's famous for its co-op system. So you either have one six month period in your college experience or three separate six month periods. I had three, that's why I was here for five years, where you just go work. You just go get a job and work and get experience in the field. And that's what kind of set, sets Drexel apart. I really didn't even know that. I think when I came over here, I was like, I don't know what a co-op is. I don't, I don't care. But so when we were in our, in this year, I believe, we got the opportunity if we wanted to switch from one co-op to three co-ops and extend our stay, stay in college. Our, our year was the first year in game design where they just let it be open to everybody could choose to do that. And so a majority of us switched. I think about 70% of our class switched to the five year instead of the four year. And so this was my first one. I was a game art intern. Um, I will not say the names of the companies because I might badmouth some of them, uh, probably. This first one ended up actually being very pivotal to my direction as an artist later. I didn't know it at the time, but this is where I was forced to learn Blender. And so like I had said, Maya is a 3D software that we used in class, That's that was the standard. And that's what we were told was industry standard, right? They're like, you're learning Maya because this is what everyone uses. But for this co-op, they were like, we use Blender, we screw Maya, nobody wants to pay for the license. <laughs> nobody wants to pay that license. So we, we learned, or I learned, me personally, I learned Blender. And so I put together this whole environment basically over the course of months. I rebuilt it like twice because we started out and made the whole thing in Blender. And then we had to take the whole thing and move it to Unity. And it was just this long, laborious process. And I was unpaid on my first co-op, but it ended up teaching me a lot. A lot and it taught me that actually 3d modeling and building environments does not have to it doesn't have to be as painful as it as it seemed it would be in our classes but yeah this ended up being used for a client-based VR game which I never even saw the final product of and I don't know if there ever was a final product for but that's none of my business that's how small little indie studios are Maybe it came out, maybe it didn't. This was something else I did for that same co-op is working with Daz 3D to put together characters. This was such, this process broke my laptop. 
like fully it, to this day it does not run the same as before i downloaded daz 3d and character creator we'd go from daz which is not a modeling software i didn't model anything i was just assembling things and tweaking values not a modeling software and put together characters based on like concepts and then try to optimize them for games by bringing them into character creator it was I would not recommend that process to anyone. I don't know why we did it, but this was the kind of stuff I was making was very like corporate, client appropriate models. And then I was making fan art, question mark, or, you know, personal projects that aligned with the, the concept art sort of job idea. So this was a concept I made. Obviously I've learned a lot about things. <laughs> I'm learning. You can see visually that I'm learning. So I'm doing different, visual tricks that I wouldn't have done before. Things like putting caustic filters from images over the water or using textures on the stone. You know, different things. I'm I'm cracking the code a little. I'm beginning to understand about like kit bashing and stuff like that. Which is like, oh, there may be sort of inappropriate images, imagery here. Don't, don't report me. Um, and then that's where we, we're, now we move on to year three. So like I said in that co-op is that I learned Blender and that would end up being pivotal. But at the time, I was like, this is just another horrible software that I have to be in that's slightly less painful than Maya. So I was still in the camp that I was gonna be a purely 2D visual artist by the time college year three rolls around. It took a long time for me to try and stray from that, right? But here we are, we're still on the concept art journey. I think this was actually for class. So this was for, um, you have to take a portfolio class at my school three times. So this might've been the first time that I took it where you have to do a personal project where you're doing something that contributes towards your portfolio. The goal is to expand your portfolio. Uh, the, the classwork is more than that. It's also like comparing your portfolio to what you want it to be, to who has jobs in the industry, stuff like that. I also have a video. <laughs> I've, I've made many videos about things I've learned at Drexel, but I have a video talking about some similar things that you learn in that class if you're interested in very specific sort of portfolio advice. But this was for some concept, uh, character concept work for a game concept that I still have to this day, which I will not talk about until I one day actually have the balls to make a video game like fully. I mean, I've made video games, but you know what I mean? Like me, myself, I, I have to find some way to articulate it, right? That day is not today, but this was a concept for, or an image for that concept that I hold. Uh, this was from a concept art class, very specifically a concept art class. Concept was Eastern European inspired town center, it doesn't hit. This does not hit. This is pretty bad to me. The clouds in the background are pretty funny. <laughs> a lot of stuff in this is just not, I, this one, I went in and actually set up like block out in Blender. Didn't help. Looks bad. It, it, it makes me feel good today to know how much better I would do given the same prompt and assignment. That's what I'll say. But this was for a concept art class. At Drexel, we did have certain specialized classes every once in a while. When concept art, the class rolled around, I was like, okay, this is it. This is for me. There's a couple times that I've taken the classes at Drexel that are for specific things that I wanted to do. And after the class, I'm like, well, actually, I don't think that is what I meant to do. And that's happened multiple times. But anyway, this is from that class. This is also from that class, the hamster launcher. Low-key, this is pretty funny. This assignment is still good, but we're talking about, obviously not like a finished sort of render, but the the prompt was non-violent FPS, optional cute, right? So you can see the prompt in the top middle bit, but thinking about that exactly, cute little weapons that we could use. And so I had more sketches on, on the side there, but uh, ultimately went with the hamster launcher. And this, this one's still successful. When I'm not trying to render from back in these days, I had some pretty good concepts. And what, I'll say one more thing. At the time, I was still one of the better artists. So I didn't come in here and rise the ranks. You can think of me in proportion to everyone else in my degree as I generally rode along the top, okay? So this was this was pretty good. I still think this sketch is pretty good, but stuff like this was pretty, pretty top tier for the time. This was for uh, a horrible class. It was horrible, but <laughs> like everybody hated this class. Basically, you just had to make like a game that told a story. So you had groups of people and we just made a game, right? And so they were based on a story. Ours was based on the short story about the yellow wallpaper where the lady's in the room, she goes mad, whatever. So this was the storyboard of how the game would go. 
like the whole game. This is the storyboard. Very straightforward, people going mad, blah, blah, blah. But the class itself was horrible. Our teacher was like horrible. We had to read so much. If you want, if you think that game design is gonna be a degree where you are never reading anything or doing any actual real homework besides making video games, you are mistaken. We had a full, not only do you have to take gen eds, right? Of course, cause I'm getting a bachelor's in science because I got a bachelor's in science, but we also had a lot of these shockingly rigorous academic game design specific classes. Like this one, she was so cruel with the readings and so cruel with what we had to do. And we were all like, lady, <laughs> we wanna make video games, okay? You don't have to make us read. Although the teacher was difficult and the coursework was difficult and we had to pull some all-nighters to make the actual game happen, which I don't have any images of the game itself. I do have this storyboard, which was low key, the best bit of output I had from the whole class portfolio wise. This was from the concept art class as well. This was, the prompt was to make some kind of rhythm game. Or maybe I chose to make it a rhythm game because I'm a big rock band fan. And the thing I love to do the most in rock band is drum. So this is sort of rock band drumming inspired. I don't know, it's very simple and straightforward. I think I had to iter iterate on it a couple times, but I don't know, it's sort of whatever. <laughs> it's just concept art. It's not, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I also took a storyboarding class, a whole class just for storyboarding. This is not game design, this is actually film department. I ended up taking a lot of film department classes. This class was pretty fun. Uh, I was the only one in that class that had a sort of artistic background and it kind of showed, but you don't actually have to be a great artist to be a good storyboarder, right? So you just have to be able to express something quickly, which is something that I was always really good at. So specifically when it comes to art making was the sort of quick expression of something. That's why I like concept art because you could just put together a concept really quick. And yes, I could render if I had to, but I could just also put an idea down and get it across in the sketch phase. That, that's what was shining through in the hamster launcher, right? So this class was pretty fun for me. It made me low key think I could be a storyboard artist, but it's not something that I've pursued since very heavily though. It's something I probably could if, if all else fails. And then here are some assets for digital janitors. Remember that project that I talked about concepting a while ago? It was still happening. We were actually finishing up. It had been way more than <laughs> six months uh, because of COVID and because of our own, you know, games take a long time. But these are some of the assets that I was working on for digital janitors at the time. So on the right there, that is an animated uh, GIF of one of the enemies you encounter in the game um, during a special level. The, the game is actually about like a 90s corporate environment, but there's a certain special level where you can encounter her as an enemy there in her little outfit. Um, and you can go play that game for free on Steam. It's actually just free and because we didn't want to deal with the taxes anymore. <laughs> so we just made it free. So if you're interested, you can go play that. Um, and it's a whole game. And then on the left are all of the achievements, actually all the Steam achievements that you can get that we put into the game as well, which I designed. Uh, and that is Pushy the Pushpin, who is our, our little mascot for the game. But yeah, I mean, I was still working on it. It was still going on. I made dozens and dozens of assets for it, but these are just some of the fun ones. Um, and then that brings us to my second co-op, which was during my, my third year here. This was my worst one by far. Another unpaid one. It was for a company in New York, but it was remote, of course, because COVID. But these are like the only two pieces of output I produced because these were both made in Blender. Fun fact is that ever since being on that first co-op, I had decided Blender was the way to go. And I was actually done with all my 3D coursework by this point. I think the last class you have to take in Maya mandatorily is at the end of like second term of second year. So we were done with that. We were on to other sort of things, but when I had to do 3D things, I would always choose Blender. Obviously these two things are pretty horrible by my current standards, but <laughs> they were revolutionary at the time. Like the bird guy was my first time making an organic character. I, I actually lost the footage, but our uh, final project for our rigging class, I, I had done rigging and humanoid stuff before, but this was my first time doing like a creature, a little cute little creature. And then on the right, there, no, on the left, brah. On the left, there is a supposed logo, but that was my first time trying out particle effects. So I was learning things, but this co-op was horrible. It, I mean, the, the, the tea is that they hired everybody who owned a VR headset. 
and that's they didn't tell us that 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 was like the criteria to be hired but it's just because they wanted free qa is how they got us to work for them and so these things were like little things on the side like these are supposed to be like little mascots and logos and you know useless stuff it wasn't actual game dev i mean qa is actual game dev that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying like the art output was total filler and of course i was still making fan art and i think this is the point when it started getting good <laughs> like i look at these images now and although i see flaws i still think they hold up to this day this is when i'm starting to crack the code i'm starting to i'm starting to really actually produce stuff that is looking like how i would want it to look in my head and i have a distinct style as well i think i've always had somewhat of a style that's been shaped by like the cartoonishness of, of my brain like i sort of am a cartoon character internally and in how i see things and look at things so caricature and and that's why caricature and things like concept iteration can be so quick with me because i just see things simplified like a cartoon in my head but um seeing how it translates directly to this sort of stuff where i'm beginning to have graphical awareness it's kind of satisfying you know it's kind of even looking at it now i'm like okay well done isabella <laughs> you're you're getting it but yeah still making fan art i actually what i'll say is that right now spoiler i haven't made fan art like this in a very long time maybe i should get back into it maybe maybe i'd be good but the way that i express my fan art now is different than this uh, no spoilers sorry but this is when i was really getting good at 2d in my opinion you can tell me i'm horrible it's okay but i think they're pretty good and so here we are junior year this was actually so a fun thing is that third year which would normally be a junior year was actually called pre-junior because i was a five-year student so now here we are college year four junior year obviously i will say by now you could see by the end of the year three, I was getting somewhere visually. I was beginning to connect visual dots that I couldn't before that. I mean, you can see the drip of progress, I think. I think that's what's so fascinating about all this, putting putting it together, is that the years of me learning and learning in all these different classes, like I'm not including a lot of coursework, um, we had to take design fundamentals and stuff like that. And I took, you know, figure drawing, I took, every sort of art class I could. I have a minor in fine art. I would have a double major, but you can't actually have a double major in fine art at my school because there's no fine art major. We have a fine art minor. I was taking all these classes and they were really contributing. I don't know if <laughs> you can see the classes, the practice of having to do all sorts of homework and things. Like th what I'm showing you is a drop in the bucket of what I produced throughout college, but it's, it's a distilled sort of drop. It's, it's, I, I think a good encapsulation. But anyway, year four, Digital Janitors releases at the beginning of the year. Um, and so this is some of our final stuff that we made uh, on the left, on the left. There is the final poster that we ended up going for and it had several different iterations that I had to make for our Steam package. But that was an illustration I made showing off some of the themes from the game. Still looks good, still holds up, but it has that same sort of visual style as these ones, right? You can tell that I'm I'm beginning to go for bright colors, you know, outlines, sort of very heavy graphical influence. On the right side on the top, that's actually that same witch, right? In the context of there's a boss level that is an homage to a 90s adventure game, like a point and click adventure, even though the game itself is not, it doesn't play like that. This particular level we made is sort of high fantasy 90s <laughs> game moment, which was pretty cute. And it was something that actually not all the team wanted because it would take too much time from dev. So me and one of my friends on the team were like, if we do this in one weekend, can, can we keep it in the game? And so we did it. And so I outputted that like really, really quickly, but I think it ended up turning out really nice. Um, and then at the bottom right, spoiler, is <laughs> a vision of what you see at the end of the game, uh, made from many different pieces that were put together and animated an engine in the end, but that was sort of culmination of my pixel art days, because I was, I was working in pixel art for the majority of the game, and animating in pixel format, which I don't really do typically like nowadays like i wouldn't consider myself a pixel artist it's sort of a different art form completely to traditional illustration but i can do it and i was doing it for the game but this is sort of the end of that era for me for now i mean i would go back and do it again but 
that's what I was working with for digital janitors, which spoiler alert, what I'll say is that it's really hard to actually develop and publish a whole game <laughs> and have a LLC just period, but especially in college, like before graduating. And so that's actually got what got one of my friends on the team hired at a AAA company um, because when you're a producer in a published game, that's pretty big. So she does production, but stuff like that is a big deal. I would say it's aspirational to do it in college, but possible with the right resources. So I'm very proud of this uh, as a resume point, though it's not ultimately actually relevant to my resume today. It's kind of, it's kind of a nice achievement. Was not a commercial success though. That's why it's free. Cause we actually lose more money on taxes when you form an LLC than any money we ever made. So uh, I also took a tablet drawing class, which I was like, I think this will go well. <laughs> Because by this point, I'd been using my Cintiq for years. I still have my Cintiq. It's like literally r right off screen, but it's, it I use it all the time. Um, it's probably the best investment I ever made. But the tablet drawing class was actually iPad specific and I don't have an iPad. So the school gave me one for a little bit, um, but we'd go around and this was just like plain air drawing on, on, a, on an iPad. So we'd go to a museum. Uh, these were both from museums or I should say installations, right? Where we were drawing in, well, I think I was drawing in Procreate for all of these, which is something I don't normally use because I don't have an iPad. This is just an example of what my, you can think of this as basically analogous to a traditional art level, I would say, and how, and how it was structured. Like this isn't, this is based on observation, not on like photo bashing is what I'll say. If that means anything to you. <laughs> if it doesn't, then this is just how good I was drawing at this point. Um, these are also from museums and quick, and these are, these are timed experiences obviously cause they're from observation. So these are maybe like all of these are like one to two hour sort of pieces. But I, as I said before, I'm pretty good when it comes to quickly expressing something. Uh, and this was the final from that class, a series of three drawings based on famous paintings where the subject was replaced with my pet rats. So on <laughs> the rats are no longer with us. Unfortunately, we do have, we did have uh, pet rats for a few years here in college, but they don't live forever, unfortunately. But while they were still with us, I made these drawings for the class and they went over pretty well. I would say people thought they were pretty good and not just visually, but they're, they're funny, you know, subject matter. I always prefer a little bit of humor and I was still concepting. What's crazy is four years in, I was still, I was still under the impression I would be an illustrator for games. I would be working in 2d for games. And so this was for that same portfolio class where I did the concept art a year prior, right? So this is my second time taking it. I, once again, I re, I did concept art. This was reworking something from Vampire the Masquerade. Another one of my favorite games ever. Bloodlines is really, really a masterpiece um, up until the end anyway, but it, the idea was to reimagine a character from, from that. Um, and that was a portfolio piece at the time. Uh, this is the same character Nordic guy from a year prior, right? This is that same game concept that I have in my head here, but this was for actually pitching our junior workshop, right? We were finally in our junior, our official junior year. The idea was we all had to go up and pitch a project that we would all make together as a class um, as our junior workshop project. And so this was me pitching my, my concept that I have, but of course, actually it was too complicated. <laughs> and so the class ended up voting on a different project that we all made for our junior workshop, which I was an illustrator for. My role on the team uh, was splash artist. So I ended up just every single week, my output and what I contributed was an illustration for one of the many um, mini games in our, in our game, which was Bean Bandits. At the time it was called Tomb Raiders, but it ended up being Bean Bandits. And it was just like a, cooperative or versus it was like a Mario party type thing, but you played as these little guys and yeah, I just made like 20 of these, but these are some of the better ones. And then in terms of, this was actually additional coursework, but we're, look, I'm, I haven't forgotten 3d yet. Uh, I just preferred 2d, but I did take a Houdini class, which ended up actually being okay. I hated the professor because 
I hate when a professor just asks too much. You know, I'm like, just chill out, okay? I have a life. And frequently in game design, professors actually didn't ask too much. There, it just was the occasional one that really was like stepping over bounds. But for Houdini, although the professor and I did not get along, she actually, we had a one-on-one -on -one and she was like, um, I think you're not trying your best and I don't think you're very professional and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, very funny. Yeah, despite her, the class itself, I managed to make some pretty nice things, learn some useful-ish tools. This is when I started thinking that maybe I shouldn't be a concept artist anymore. Not at, in this class, but this class was happening in parallel to some other things that I was like, okay, maybe I should be an environment artist. Maybe I should work in 3D. And so that image on the left was my final where essentially I cheesed it and I just wanted to make an environment art piece in unreal is what that's in and i mean obviously looking at it now the trees look horrible it's just the same straight horrible tree in houdini and the terrain was generated in houdini and the rocks some of the rocks and the water that you can barely see the waterfall was a dot network that whatever but i just wanted to like make something and light it that's what i really wanted to do in unreal and so i even though it had nothing to do with the coursework really i mean some of it kind of did like the the waterfall animation was sort of complicated but i just wanted to make an environment and so that was sort of telling about how i was thinking and things were changing i really like that donut that's above my head this this donut i thought that that was like the most successful piece i made <laughs> all term like some of the stuff i really like cheesed but um i was I was beginning to think about, I mean, I wouldn't use Houdini really by choice today. I could, I guess, because it's node-based, so it's something I kind of understand fundamentally. But even though this class was horrible and a lot of work, I was I was putting together pieces. Um, and then this was for my final co-op, my probably best co-op, I would say. I mean, it was best because I got paid and the people there were amazing and it was very professional, the company. It's a small company in Philadelphia, but I spent a very large amount of time in Maya restoring this old ship model and organizing and optimizing and doing all sorts of stuff. Like, I didn't even make the model of the ship. It was one that was made like 10 years ago, but they handed it to me and they said, just fix it. And so hours and hours and hours I spent UVing and fixing and organizing and whatever this this ship and texturing it for a game that we were making obviously and yeah that that final image that you see on the on the right is it in unity with some shader work i mean i didn't do all the shaders or really any of the shaders i made the skybox but this was like a collaborative effort but i don't know it was it was a nice co-op i actually spent a lot of time video editing <laughs> and not doing like specifically game related things but i'm fine with that i'm fine with dipping my toes in everything. Which makes it ironic that I'd like to work AAA because liking to dip your toes in everything is a very indie sort of thing. Uh, Cause I'm used to working indie. I worked for several indie games and stuff. But anyway, this was a nice co-op. Didn't learn a ton is what I'll say. The one that I learned the most at by far was that first one, but the third one was fun. So, and I got paid. Uh, I'm still painting in year four. I'm still painting, still trying new things, still learning. Uh, this was a self-portrait portrait I made at the time with one of my rats, Crouton, at my desk, the very desk I'm still recording at now for a limited amount of time before I move away from Philadelphia. But this was like sort of like a moment in time for me thinking about my desk. And I hadn't painted myself in a long time. So I was like, why not? And I, still liked making concept art like i wasn't fully like i can't do that in fact this little known guy for one of the art station challenges that i didn't even end up finishing was kind of cool i'm i'm definitely trying to learn some new things trying to keep things together but it was sort of stagnating for me concept art here's some more fan art i was still making look not just like fine art traditional art i was still making fan art and it was continuing continuing to look better than ever still progressing but it wasn't making me feel particularly inspired this is me experimenting with actually going into unity so what this is is that do you remember that game ui one that i showed earlier where i was like this is horrible on the right on the bottom one 
No, on the left. Oh my god, how many times am I going to do that? On the bottom left is a UI mock-up I did for a game concept where the whole interface is just you're on like an online dating platform and you're just dating random aliens. Because I was like, well, what's the best part of Mass Effect? <laughs> this is the actual line of thought. I was like, well, the best part of Mass Effect is dating aliens. So what if we just made something that is just you dating aliens? So what made my UI concepts better, which I only make for fun. I don't aspire to be a UI artist, though I think I probably could. What made them fun is I discovered the tool Figma, which I learned at that last co-op. That's something that I took away and I still love to this day. Like I could just go in and if you're like, make a concept for a UI in Figma. I would just do it for fun because I just think it's such a wonderful, delightful program. And I mean, obviously I know Photoshop super well, but Figma is just so easy to just drag and drop and move and I, I love it. But um, in the top right was me attempting to go into Unity and try and make the UI work, which I abandoned because I don't really have any time or patience in my life, to be honest, uh, especially not to like learn <laughs> from scratch engine based stuff because I was always too busy making art I never actually really learned how to work too much in unity or unreal though nowadays I'm actually unreal is is my preferred but at the time unity was the one I was more comfortable in so I hopped in and try and make something but the fact that I got those button working the buttons working at all is a testament to my resilience as a person but the UI concept itself is much more interesting to me and I thought it was very cute I have I have multiple screens um, and I, I would even make videos. I wonder if I put that in here. No. So this is when I started, this is when I started making video mockups. So the reason why I don't make like traditional 2D fan art anymore is because, is because I think through this major, my brain has like evolved. I don't think in terms of like 2d images anymore period i'm thinking in terms of games like it's like it's like my mind actually this i'm gonna sound like such a dork but my mind only thinks of projects i want to make that are like interactive or in motion so this is an example of that this is not fan art but this was like just personal art i was like i would love to make something that a player could interact with and it would be a funny i don't know like this this is an example of it I'll, I guess I'll insert the mock-up now of what, of what the interaction, it was just an edited video made of still images, right? That's how I make these things is just with the tools I have. It's not actually an engine really, but I made like a mock-up in my brain and in Premiere of what, of what this game might look and feel like. And so that is when this whole new art making medium emerged in my brain as I was like, I can just make a video that shows what this will feel like. And that is a much better way to express my thought than not. Right. And so let, and so now let me show you some of these revolutionary. <laughs> this is another one I made of a Sailor Moon video game concept. That's another one where I was like, when was the last time a Sailor Moon game came out? Like literally a Sailor Moon game hasn't come out since the 90s. So I put together a UI mock-up of what, of what the game might feel like to play if you played a Sailor Moon game today that was like a 2D fighter. And so I thought, I often think about grand scope. Also, I was like, well, maybe I can try and figure out a way to make a mock-up um, in Blender or something that shows a 3D, the portion, like the actual fighting portion, but it was too much work. So I gave up on that a while ago, but this was like my first time making a big, true, I actually made this one before the other one, but a, a UI manga. Um, and then in the same vein, I was thinking about, at this point, this is when Dragon Ball Superhero came out, the movie. This one I actually made like the next year, but I think it fits in the theme of looking at me making like video fan art. Um, but what it might be like when Beast Gohan was in the game Dragon Ball Legends, which I play all the time for fun. But clearly I am I like to think about more complicated means of expressing my fan art nowadays than a 2D image. Like to me, if I went back and painted a 2D image now, I feel like it'd be like, okay, like if what I'm trying to express is something flat like that, I guess I would, but I just think too complicated nowadays. That's what I've taken away from game design is my artistic goals are too complicated. And all of those things are personal projects is what I'll say. And this is also a personal project and the beginning of an era. So do you remember that same desk that I had that self-portrait self of 
um, that I painted. This is the same desk made in blender so one day i was just stricken i'm often just stricken by passion like it strikes me like lightning i'm like i have to make it now or i'm never gonna make it or i'm gonna forget or i'm gonna lose steam or something and so i am just stricken with the desire to make a 3d diorama of my room i don't know why i probably saw somebody else make one on my twitter feed or something and i was like i can do that that's probably how my brain was like i can do that maybe i should do that and this is the first time, like ever, that I made a 3D project of my own desire and my own accord. And the way it turned out, I was like, to this day, I think this looks great. I think the lighting on it is beautiful. I think it's so cozy and warm and cute. I think it's exactly what I set out to make. And when I make something physically, when the final product looks like how it looks in my head, I was like, holy crap i can't believe i made this and this began like an era when i was referencing that the learning blender would change my direction it was because of this random day i was like let me make this and it turned out great and i was like oh my god <laughs> oh my god maybe maybe this is what i'm meant to be doing because I, even though i've always been stuck on illustration and concept art i knew it was probably the most difficult thing you could ever get a job in period in in games or like period probably because it's so competitive and you have to be the best and i knew i was getting better but i was far from the best you know obviously this is not the best thing ever made but the point is that when i made this i was like maybe this could be something and so i kept going i kept making dioramas so this is the same diorama the bottom version behind me is the initial version this is my basement um in that same cutesy style but the top the top one the top left i think one was redone to try and make it seem more serious it still wasn't successful so this isn't on my portfolio anymore but that one was trying to do more serious lighting and i added in like mega scan stuff uh, still in Blender though, I physically downloaded Megascan mega stuff and put it in there to try and make it seem more realistic, but it didn't quite work. But I was trying to see if I could make, I mean, I was still making cutesy things, right? So this one was another cutesy one. This is a windmill from Skyrim. This is what I mean about making fan art that's more complicated. This took so much more work than if I just painted it, right? But the output was similar to what I imagined. The lighting was, is not perfect on this one. But it's cute. It's cozy. It's something I'm, I'm managing to make something, right? And the response that I was getting when I would post this online was much stronger already than some of my previous 2D work. And that's a big thing. When I post my stuff online, I'm like deeply affected by what people, <laughs> the response. Like often I expect nothing, but if people are really into something, I'm like, well, there's a reason why, you know, if people don't like your stuff, it's probably because it's not good. But if people are engaging with something, then it means it's, it's affecting people. And that's what you want art to do, right? It's supposed to affect people. Um, this was my most complicated of the cutesy dioramas of um, a bakery, clearly. I think it still is cute but ultimately i decided to pivot my direction going forward this is when i started making a push towards more serious stuff and so often this is based on what i'm seeing other people do and so i was enjoying making the cutesy ones but i decided that they weren't actually hireable ultimately as much as a more serious sort of approach to to prop and environment work. But this was another one done in Blender. This is a remake of the blacksmith room that was my final project all those years ago. The, um, obviously turned out much better, but I obviously still see things that are wrong with it now that I know, uh, such as being rendered in Blender. If you wanna work in engine and games, render in engine. But that was a lesson I had yet to learn, or at least I didn't quite know how to do it yet. And then this was a recreation of Dakota Johnson's kitchen, which is not perfect. Um, the proportions are slightly off on my version is the one closer to me here on the right. But it, this is uh, me beginning to, in my mind anyway, at the time, like master the medium, obviously not. But at the time I was like, okay, I can do it. I can, what really I was doing was like playing tricks. Like, um, a lot of this stuff is like 2D image plane trickery, but most of it is actually 3D models, shockingly. But m much of it, 
is me playing around with textures and doing like smoke and mirrors and that's okay like that's what game making is but that was me figuring out that I could do that for a better final output and this was my first ever project that I took into Unreal. That was a huge deal for me because I knew I had to end up in Unreal eventually, but I didn't really know how to use it at all. Um, my, none of my coursework was in Unreal at all, period. Um, but this was me figuring out it's possible. So I decided to remake the Morrowin McDonald's. If you haven't seen it, where have you been? But the version on top of my head here on the right was the in Blender version, me figuring out how to uh, paint everything and UV everything in Unreal and then bring it into, or in, in Blender, bring it into Unreal. And I actually learned a strategy for how to do that years ago and during my co-op when I was learning Blender about how to, how to bake multiple different maps and paint multiple different things all on the same model. And so that's what I was using here. And it's how I built like an entire game senior year. But uh, this is when I was beginning to figure out how to do that. And that brings us to our final, my final year of college where I had pivoted completely. I was like, no more will I be a concept artist and illustrator first. That is just something that I could do, but I, I, I'm not under delusions that, that that's going to be an easy route for me. Um, so I'm going to pivot to something slightly more specialized in environment art. That's where I was at the beginning of year five. And I had this fresh new passion for environment art and 3D and stuff like that and working in Unreal. And so for my senior project, I, I mean, it was in Unity because our team wanted to work in Unity because our education was in Unity. Um, I was the environment artist and uh, art lead really for our senior project, firmware and firmware, which you can't really play anywhere. <laughs> our itch page is down. I don't know whose it is that owns it, that, um, but you can't play it. But I had a major part in the direction of this entire senior project and I, made a lot of the things you see here on the screen um, the same way that I said for that Marlon McDonald's project of you paint it in Blender, you paint multiple textures, you, whatever, and then you bake it onto one concise map uh, to bring into engine. Um, and I was still passionate about video making mock-ups using all sorts of tools. So I made this mock-up uh, in Blender to kind of express to the team because we had some difficulty as a team figuring out the vision like a lot of people on the art side had difficulty like putting together the concept and also people that we were presenting to because this was for class were not understanding the concept so it was my job to express the concept so this was like the one piece of concept art that was made for the entire project uh was this video that i made that was supposed to give uh, just basically an outline of what the gameplay might look like. And it ended up, the final product ended up looking pretty similar, actually. I mean, visually, obviously, it was very different with textures. <laughs> and we cut a few of the things that we thought we would have in there. Um, but that's just, that's just game development. But it ended up being pretty similar because I was the art lead the whole time. So I knew what the vision was. But this was just made so that other people could understand it. And sometimes that's what you have to do when you, when you're doing art direction and trying to express a concept the best way to do that is visually you can say however many words you want but if you're seeing something that's literally worth it's not worth a thousand it's worth like a million words especially a video but anyway i did manage to take an environment art and unreal class can you believe that we had something specific once again to what i wanted to do but do you remember what i said last time is that whenever i take a class that is specific to what i want to do it usually actually makes me not want to do it anymore and that was so true uh even though i love the professor one of the people on this project did not do anything it was, it was so stressful and so basically Everything you see here was something that I put together, uh, except for the actual body. This is a chalet. The concept is a post-apocalyptic chalet. Chalet itself was modeled by one of my friends on the team, but I had to put together everything else. We had all sorts of renders. Anyway, it was a stressful class for no reason because I love environment art. This is what made me realize, actually, environment art is not what I want to do. I prefer the lighting. <laughs> just the lighting, which is a whole thing in, its, in itself. But this was from a class I took actually called lighting and surfacing. But unlike environment art, there was actually, it did not dissuade me from lighting. It was actually, the class itself had basically nothing to do with lighting. It was all surfacing. So I still like lighting, but um, it was called lighting and surfacing because we actually learned substance 3D, which I love and I would still use 
all the time if I had any reason to, if I need it for a personal project or something. I love Substance. It's designer, we use 3D designer, but this project was like a mock version of a actual art test for Naughty Dog that the professor had acquired over the years, but it, we are providing the models. It's just our job to texture everything. And so that's what I did. I think it turned out pretty cute. I don't know what to tell you. I rendered it in Unreal. That's what's separating me from everybody else in the class because the class was mostly actually underclassmen for this one. This was like a midterm assignment. It wasn't a final. So I know when things can be better, but <laughs> I used the same strategy for this one as I did for my final project for a senior project or whatever, where you combine textures in Blender and bring them in Unreal. But the textures themselves, for the most part, I made from scratch using designer. Um, and then this was the final for that class. This is a diorama of a creepy bathroom, obviously, where this one I also modeled basically everything in Unreal. I think I added a few things like rocks and grass or whatever. No, I modeled it in Blender, sorry. Modeled everything in Blender and I added a few things from my Unreal library just for like appearances like a light switch and some decals or whatever but the majority of everything you hear I textured and modeled myself and the final for the class was described as a diorama that would be he my professor actually even pulled up um this picture and was like make something like this <laughs> basically he, he really had my portfolio open that was that made my well, I can't say what my phrase was. It made me feel special, okay? That's what I'll say when he pulled that up. <laughs> and he said, for your final, make something like that. But obviously I had to push myself harder. If he's using my old work as a demonstration for what we need to make, I need to push myself. And I think it turned out okay. Yeah, it's not bad. It's kind of cute. I don't think I would get hired in, in the modern job market with something like this as an environment artist, but luckily that's not what I'm going for. I also took a painting class. I'm, that's funny that I included that in this, but I took a painting class senior year of college and I hadn't painted anything in years. Like we're talking about actual traditional, I mean, obviously I digital paint and I know how to paint, but I hadn't just taken out my acrylics and put them to canvas in years at this point. And it was very, very cathartic to me. This was my final um, self portrait as well. I thought it'd be nice to include some self-portraits from the years of this. This is basically what I look like now. But yeah, this one, what you can't really tell from a 2D picture and not seeing it in person was I was really exploring texture, which is something that I can't really use or I can't really think about as much when painting 2D digitally, but I can think about in 3D spaces, right? Thinking about how things uh, emerge from the canvas. So the face I did pretty much entirely with a palette knife on this one, and then I touched it up with, with a paintbrush. But when you see it in person, it's like behind me over there, it comes off a couple um, centimeters off the canvas and you can see, you know, the paint thick on there. And I, I really, I really love that. That was something that I would have been too scared to do when I was younger, but you know, growing up, <laughs> I was beginning to come into my own more artistically. So uh, yeah, this one turned out pretty good. And this was my first ever f paid freelance thing that I was doing. So we haven't gone into some of my lighting work that I was doing quite yet because it's personal. So I always put the personal towards the end if I can. But this was my first time doing freelance 3D work. And it's for a game coming out shortly on Steam um, sometime this year. Wanted in hell. But this is my first time. I was reached out to by the guy making the game. And he was like, hey, I like your lighting portfolio. Do you want to be a lighting artist freelance for this game? I was like, period. And I did one level. Well, my name will be in the credits, but this was pivotal to me. I mean, obviously the concept for the level was that it was a snow level. It's like a whiteout is what they call it. But this was my first time being reached out to and doing that. I mean, I don't want to be a freelance artist. I'd like to have like a job in healthcare, but this was telling me, I was like, okay, we're getting good enough. We're getting good enough to be paid by somebody anyway. And so let's get into that journey about how I became a lighting artist. This is the last journey. I, we've been we've been on this on this adventure for so long now. If you stuck through, you get here's your reward. We're getting to the the meat of it. <laughs> Finally, I mean not really. All of, all of it contributes. All of it is a piece in the in the thread. But um, 
this is when I'm beginning to transition from environment to lighting. And so this was my first ever piece that I was like, okay, the point of this is lighting. But what I was doing wrong is that I was thinking about it like an environment artist. So I actually assembled this environment using some assets I had. I didn't model anything for this, but I just used things that I had from other asset packs and from mega scans and Unreal. And I assembled the room that would then showcase the lighting. And I would later get advice. Uh, what I do sometimes, like every couple of months, is I'll reach out to people on Joe Hobbs, Twitter, um, game dev outreach advice contact list. I said so many words. It's, it's just a list where you, people who are on the list, work in games and have volunteered. If you reach out to people on the list, they will just give you advice on your portfolio or talk to you, basically. And so I reached out to lighting artists and they pretty much all instantly told me like, you don't have to build an environment. It is so much easier as a lighting artist to just light somebody else's environment and it will often look much better because you shouldn't be wasting resources building an environment if the point is that you want to make lighting, you know? So that made sense. But at the time, this is me transitioning letting go of needing to build the environment and just focusing on the lighting. Um, here's that same one at night. In terms of the lighting itself, it's not great. I hadn't, I was just guessing. I had never taken a lighting class at any point. Um, I was just guessing based on what I knew from art, right? So obviously if I'm painting and whatever and I know how to do these things, I have a fundamental sort of understanding of what might look good. Like. I, by this point, I have developed a sense for what should look good, right? But everybody kind of has that. Everybody kind of knows when something looks bad, but people don't know, they ha haven't developed what makes things look good, right? So this is me being like, well, let's go for what looks okay. Um, the same one at night, which is like vaguely better, but not on my portfolio now obviously i'm still exploring and figuring out this is me doing a lighting exploration finally in something that i didn't build right so this is a this is a pre-made asset pack this was free on the unreal marketplace for a month i think um and this is me doing the right thing is what i'll say now of trying different things uh i still didn't understand sort of fundamental <laughs> things about lighting that i know now which is that things should have one focal point there shouldn't be competing saturations okay the subject or whatever you're the point of lighting is what i'll say now here's a lighting lesson for free in games is that the lighting is supposed to direct you towards something okay and it should not be competing visually with anything else there should be a clear focus and so that's something i didn't really know i was just doing whatever looks good and so i was exploring with that and trying out different sources of light and everything. And that's great. It's good to have different sources um, to show flexibility, but I was sort of lacking a fundamental piece. And so I continue to get feedback that was so valuable from people in the industry. This is another one where I was like, oh, this is the best thing I ever lit. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's because the environment's beautiful. The lighting itself is not actually contributing much to the success. What else, I'll say, especially the one at the bottom left is super like sporadic there's no clear focal point or whatever the top right one is almost okay just because the sunlight is a pretty clear focus right for outside but it's clear i don't really know what i'm doing in these um, you might be looking at them if you don't know about lighting you'd be like well they look kind of pretty i'll tell you it's not <laughs> it's not it and so this is one where I'm beginning to focus. This is not in my portfolio either. And I was still making the mistake of using like an environment that I put together myself, but this was with a mega scan modular pack, but this was me relighting something I'd already made. So that's why this is almost looking okay. Almost the outside is super distracting. The fact that it's that brilliant white light where you can't see anything, but the inside, if I were to just crop it a little, it's beginning to look more cinematic. It's looking more filmic. I'm starting to figure something out, right? We're beginning to see a great a gradient of light throughout the room. I was kind of starting to get really inspired by Naughty Dog at the time and thinking, how does Naughty Dog light? Because they had a position open <laughs> as a lighting artist. And that's what made me realize I could like be a lighting artist is that that was a job. So I was starting to think about softer shadows and cinematic feel, whatever almost getting there not quite uh this was me once again almost getting there this is like we're we're almost there we're on the uh, on the precipice of revelation right this is a relight of a dekugan 
free, I think, also asset. I don't want, like, to pay for things. Yeah, we're starting to get softer. We're starting to whatever. I mean, you still have the hard shadows, like, really hard shadows underneath the actual, like, seats. If you see those on both of the images, you see, like, a hard, hard shadow, which is not good. The light is getting softer, and so that's good. We're, we're beginning to frame these more filmically. This is when I started to come up with some interesting things. The top left one ended up getting kind of complimented by some lighting artists, which was good. It, it's moody. Some people didn't like it as much because I've talked to like dozens. Some people are like, well, it doesn't make sense where the light source is coming from, but it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It's beginning to exhibit some sort of artistic direction, which is good. This one is like a textbook example of okay lighting. <laughs> is what I found looking back. Uh, this is an asset I paid like five bucks for just in a room because I was like, well, I want an abandoned room because I'm still stuck on the naughty dog concept. So this is one where there's one clear light source, right? The window that has a gradient of the lightest point as it gets darker throughout the room. And that's what we're going for is a gradient uh, typically, or at least a clear focal source, like a light source. But this is just okay. It's because the actual asset pack itself is not super great. This is funny, me going through these, I didn't think it through because these are still ones that are, are not super old. Like these are all made in the past couple of months. Obviously I've learned a lot just in my own pursuit of this. But this is one that the lighting itself, when you don't see the tree is good, but the tree looks horrible, the tree near my head. Um, I got feedback that the tree looks horrible. So I was like, okay, well let's remove it. But clearly learning. And then this is it. This is the big revelation. This is the one that got me that AAA interview, this project. All, this one is still live on my art station if you wanna go see it, but this is a, a lighting project that begins an era of me finally getting it. And that this one is actually through a lot of accident. This is one I threw together like this, just using, I was like, well, I'm losing focus. Like this one, I was like smelling Kali sunny day. I don't know. Like I'm losing, I'm losing direction. And when you feel as an artist, you're losing direction, go back to the basics. I was like, okay, complementary colors. That's what we're gonna go for. And that's literally what I did. Saturated red versus desaturated green, period. Complementary color. Saturated blue versus slight pops of like yellow orange. There you go. Go back to the basics. If, you, if you're lost, go back to the basics. And this was like my most successful, I mean, in terms of like response ever, like, ever this is the the best <laughs> i've done so far and it's i made this i don't even know a couple maybe like two months ago now as i'm filming this but it's it's probably my best one yet it's because it's engaging to look at it's fun to look at you know you look at these and you're like wow people look at that image and they, they're like oh is that from control is that from this and, that? and that's the kind of stuff you want to hear when you start hearing feedback like that there you go this is another recent one more of the same. I'm not going to toot my own horn. These aren't perfect. And I always, I always know like a couple days after I post something exactly how I can make something better. But we're, we're nearing the end of the journey here where we're producing work that's looking good. I mean, there's things to be improved on because I'm still even at where I am now, right? We see all the improvement. I'm still just a junior, you know, once I get, once I finally get a job, I'll be, I'll be a junior, you know? So there's still like infinitely more to learn. And that's, what's fun about this whole thing. Um, I'm far from done learning. I'm not, I probably will never be done learning. I'm the kind of person who I'm, I'm willing to continue pursuing my own education beyond college. Even in college, I was willing to do way more than I ever had to do. And that's it. And that's how you should be. If you are going into game design and you will never go above and beyond, what's the point? Because the actual coursework is only going to give you a taster. And it's your job to find your passion and your job to find what, what speaks to you. And as an artist, I am always hungry. Like last night, I was... I could barely sleep because I was thinking about like three different things I wanted to do. And that's how you have to be. That's how you have to be if you want to make it in the arts, in, in game design, in any art form. And there you go. That's, that's my journey. That's the conclusion. I forgot to do an end screen. Maybe let's, let's go back to the, to the opening screen and end it on that. I'm always still trying to learn. I'm still trying to make it. I'm still after my goal, you know, and even though my goals have always been changing because I feel like, oh, I did it. 
I'm done. I'm always willing to find a new one and keep going. So if this was helpful to you to see the journey and see the kinds of things I made, if you made it through this whole thing, kudos to you because this is a lot of crap that you had to had to wade through. Cause and and the and the transition from going from 2D to 3D like this. I mean that's that's how my brain is. But yeah, I don't know. If you if you are still on the fence and you know that you have passion for games and you like doing all sorts of different things then maybe game design is right for you just so you can figure out exactly what your thing is but if you are the kind of person who isn't really into variance or exploration and you just want you know one thing and you know what you want go major in that don't major in game design if you want to be a concept artist major in illustration don't waste your time and all the other BS that I had to go through, you know? I mean, concept art, I mean, you it's useful to know things like 3D for that, but if you want to be a programmer, go major in computer science. If you want healthcare <laughs> and a job, <laughs> then go major in computer science. But if you want to make games and you like technical things and you like learning and exploring, go ahead and major in game design. <laughs> and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm so happy to answer questions here on my Twitter, stuff like that. Like. I love it. I get people asking me questions to this day about the video I posted years ago talking about what game design was like. And if, if you have any questions, just ask them. I mean, I might include them. I'll probably try and remake that video because it's kind of outdated, I assume. I haven't watched it about me sophomore year talking about what game design was like for me in that moment. But so much has changed since then that I feel compelled to update update the, the masses the whole 10 of you who care right about what game design is like so anyway stay tuned maybe once i get a job i'll put it in the top comments or something but thanks for watching and drop me a follow on here or on art station or whatever if you want to see some more of my my journey because i'm probably going to keep making art until i die so <laughs> stick around